Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And I'm sure you're wondering why I'm recording this intro on Zoom today. It's because our video camera decided to die right before the interview. Great timing. Not a battery issue. It looks like it needs a repair. But I wasn't going to let that stop me from recording our interview today. It's how much I love you guys and are dedicated. So today's interview is with Canadian actor Gabriel Hogan, who plays Peter Morris in the TV show Heartland. He's also in Dacoma PD, Prince of Peoria, and a lot of Hallmark movies. So we're going to talk about all of those projects, especially Heartland, because I know a lot, a lot of Heartland fans are watching today. So we have a talk about how he came across the show, about his audition process, about working with Michelle Morgan. And then we also go back to the beginning of his career. If you don't know, both his parents are actors as well. So we have a talk about whether it was just inevitable that he got into this career. What did he want to go down another path as well? He also loved sports. So we'll find out today. There's so much to cover, so let's get into it now. Before we get into today's interview, I just want to give a shout out to our Patreons, Irene and Bev. If you want to be just like Irene and Bev, get your named mention on this show, as well as get a lot of behind the scenes content and free stuff, please visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up and have a look at all our different membership tiers. There could be one that you could be really interested in, as little as $4 a month. And also before we start, I do want to give a shout out to Teresa from Alaska. You just left a beautiful comment on our YouTube channel. And usually I don't actually read any of the YouTube comments because whenever there is, say, a negative one come up, it I don't want it to affect my mental health. But it just popped up on my email and I, for some reason I was drawn to it and I'm so glad I was because it totally just made my day. And I just want to really give a huge thank you and show my appreciation for you, Teresa, because I just loved your words and it's words like that that just keep me going. So thank you very, very much and enjoy today's interview. I know you're a Heartland fan. Here is Peter Morris from Heartland. Gabriel, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you going today? I'm all right. I'm all right. Happy to be here. Thanks. Oh, glad you could fit this into your busy schedule. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I've got to say, it's great to finally have you on because I don't know if you know this already, but most of your Heartland co-stars have been on the show before, except for Alicia Newton. So it's about time okay. we have you on too, right? <laughs> wow. I'm going to go out and limb the, on a limb, though, and say you didn't get Chris Potter, did you? Yes, I did, actually. Did you really? Yeah, we were chatting for like an uh, hour, I believe. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I don't know. I'm not surprised by that. He's a great guy. I'm <laughs> he was a bit harder to get, but I eventually got him. He was one of the most recent ones. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. It's very cool. And we've had uh, Graham Waddle on twice, so that's how much he loved it. <laughs> okay. Well, he talks a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's heaps to talk about after he left the show, so... So since this is your first time on the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and start from the beginning, if that's okay, to get a good idea of how you've made it to where you are today. So your parents and your sister are also actors, so I'm guessing it was kind of inevitable that you got into it too? Did they push you into it at all or was it really all that you ever knew because you grew up around it? Well, yeah, the latter, uh, I would say is true. Um, you know, I grew up in, you know, the green room of theater, really. Um, you know, my parents went on to, you know, they, they did both, um, they film and television careers as well, but, but it was mostly theater when I was a kid. Um, so yeah, it was an, a natural progression if that can be, if you can say that, but, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't a child actor. I think, you know, I had to, I made the decision myself probably, I think, my first professional job was probably, well, my first job in uh, the theater was, I was probably 18, 19, maybe. And um, yeah, yeah, I started around then. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously um, I've been to my parents for advice and watched their careers and, and all that sort of stuff. But uh, um, so, yeah, as much as I guess, you know, I, but that is very true, right? I mean, I suppose if you're, you know, if you're, parents run a you know a auto shop it's natural that you would uh, fix cars maybe yeah <laughs> or be know. intrigued by it at least <laughs> right right so were there any other careers that you personally wanted to pursue because i did read as well when i was doing my research on you that you loved playing sports you're a really good hockey player so do you ever want to go yeah. down that path as a career 
that? Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, like uh, a million other kids, for sure. Um, grew up playing hockey, loved it. Um, and uh, I don't think I had dreams of playing pro hockey. I think by the time I was, you know, you get into your later teen years and it becomes very serious and you make a decision, you know, the practices get earlier. It's more of a commitment and all that sort of stuff. So that kind of fell away. Um, but uh, I mean, I probably could have. I probably still could, you know. I, I you know, try out for the NHL or something. No, I'm just kidding. I guess there's always that fear as well when you're a sportsman that if you get a bad injury, you know, it's pretty much over after that. Where acting, you could do all the way up until you're dead if you want to. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, we have stunt people for that, right? Exactly. <laughs> they, they can get injured. <laughs> That's what they signed up for. And right. I was really happy to read that you are a classically trained actor, so you don't hear about that much these days. You began your career on live on stage in theatre, just like your parents. Mm. But around mm. 1997, you shifted your focus onto wanting to do TV and film. What made you want to make that change? Was it always a dream and you just were just doing the hard yards first and getting the practice? uh money no i'm just kidding um <laughs> always comes down to that. <laughs> right and interview over uh that's it that's the story um no i think um you know it's really what's presented to you uh, you know especially as a young actor at any certain time film and television came along and and um uh you know i jumped at the chance it's tough because you get uh wrapped up in 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 one of them and then uh, uh you know theater is such a big commitment you know you rehearse for so long and you do the play and you know as i was when i was coming up then a lot of times you'd have to tour the show too so you do it somewhere and then you're going to do it somewhere else so that's another and uh um and if you don't like the show or something it can be <laughs> it's a bit of a uh it can be a drag but um uh yeah i didn't really look at them you know differently um when i was when i was starting out i think i just you know i i some lovely on and i haven't really stopped since you know mm -hmm. plus i'm guessing with you know being live on stage you got to do the same thing over and over and over again as well where tv especially with tv shows you get to do something new every single time you do an episode you get to memorize a sure. whole whole new script for yourself which is, i guess keeps right. exciting yeah. yeah yeah absolutely i mean there's and obviously being in front of a live audience is amazing too, and it's got its own uh, uh, merits. And then you know, yeah, they're they're both uh, similar, and I love them both very much. I, I haven't I don't I haven't done a play in years though. Yeah. That film until they keep you know they, they keep bringing me back in for heaps of TV shows. I can see why. <laughs> And in the year 2000, you were the voice of Dylan Morton in a video game called Dino Crisis 2. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I find it really interesting with doing voices for either video games or just cartoons. How was that experience for you? Is that like an ento entirely different type of acting? Because you don't have anybody in front of you to act off. Yeah, sure. Well, video games specifically, I haven't done a ton of them, but that it is it's a lot of repetition and it's it's you know uh the emoting's different obviously it's all voice and you know they capture your face they do some motion stuff but um uh <laughs> we were just goofing on it last night actually um uh the efforts you know like you'll, you'll have like slow death long death very long death or like getting shot or something and we're joking around that there would be people that you know uh, are expert at, at efforts because you literally are doing like uh, 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 or whatever. it just seems so silly but you'll spend a whole day doing that right and you kind of lose your mind you're like what are we even doing what, what's happening right now and they just piece it all together and make it make it what it is i think that game was was translated from from uh from japanese too um and they were brilliant it was great and everything else too but there was uh um uh, we had to fix a lot of the uh, um you know grammar and sort of uh intent <laughs> with some stuff too but i had a great time uh doing that and it's funny that people will bring it up once in a while that's uh uh and of course a massive massive industry mm. well i like to I'd bring like you down memory lane you know <laughs> <laughs> 
So you have been in films since 19, what, 88? So how have you kind of kept up with the never ending competition of the industry as you've been getting older? And even what changes can you share with us that you've seen since the 80s? Shit, 88? Uh, hmm. I really did my research. Well, <laughs> I know, I'm wondering what would that even have been? 88? Oh, I guess I did a film. Yeah, so those two, that would have been a show my mom was on, Night Heat, and I did a film, Blue City Slammers probably was a feature and then and then I didn't act until I was an older teenager so yes. <laughs> that's, yeah, I, did, I totally forgot about that so, yeah wow since 88 You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I'm 69 years old no. uh, <laughs> you look um, great what's your secret <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right I'll never tell uh, I don't know what's what's changed I mean right now the past 10 years have been nuts right because with streaming and and everything else and the platforms um it's uh and even right now even this past year things have changed so much i think there's more content out there there's more opportunity probably for actors um to be candid about it we don't generally make as much as we did back in the days when there was you know it was basic you know standard television there was the big networks and if you got on one of those shows you know residuals all that sort of stuff um and uh I think not shooting on film anymore too. I'm, I, I am actually old enough and I do remember when we shot even television shows on film where you have, uh, you know, time is money and you have this much amount of time. So when they roll the camera, all those moments are, are precious and mean something, right? And now you never shoot on film unless you're Christopher Nolan or something like that, right? So th there's, you know, a lot of just rolling, keep rolling and you can run into it again or take it again, which is, which is great. I do a lot of comedy too. And it, it's great for comedy because you can keep it open, try new things and, you know, and, and not feel that, that pressure. But there is um, something to be said about the immediacy and the, um, that, uh, that magic when they say action, when it was film, when you could hear it rolling through the, the school and, 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 you know, you had to be there and be, be, uh, you know, be ready. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's so true, though, because if you got comedy, you just, some of the best gold that you get is when you don't even feel like you're filming anymore. <laughs> and stuff that's off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. For sure. Well, I yeah. recently had yeah. a really big laugh watching you as Jusup in Prince of Peoria on Netflix. It's here in <laughs> Australia now. Loved it. Amazing. It looks Amazing. like a really funny and fun character to play. Can you like tell us more about it for yourself? Sure. Um, yeah, that was one of those ones that I think I went in and read for it. I think I was doing, I had done the pilot for Tacoma FD, which is a comedy that I'm doing now. I had a mustache for that. And I went in to read for this guy and, you know, he's British and it's, it's, uh, I didn't really know what you can read it, but I'm like, I don't know what they're, I was basically doing my best John Cleese imitation, you know, <laughs> when I went in and read for it. And then uh, it was great, yeah, they love it. And then uh, I got it and I'm like, oh shit, now I have to actually do it, right? <laughs> do, do the role. Um, but it was great fun because it was my first uh, uh, time as a regular in, um, in uh, uh, like a live, audi a, a live audience uh, a sitcom, right? Mm. Um, so that, that whole process and everything was great and fun to be a part of it and my, my uh, my daughter, who was, uh, was it was two years ago, I guess, so she was probably seven or eight at the time. That was the first time where she was actually impressed with something I had done. She came <laughs> to the studio audience, right, and watched, you know, it's got that energy and everybody's laughing and applauding, you know, and all that sort of thing. So it was great. And it was a great bunch of people. It was fun and um, uh, just a great, uh, a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we could have done more, actually. We just, that lasted uh, one season. Oh, so we can't expect another one? Damn it. <laughs> No, I know, I know. Um, they so like, wait, is that how? Um, too. <laughs> I know. Well, I think they expected to to do more, right? I think they always, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is that how? Uh, so you guys have that there. Do you? Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, Heartland. Is that? Is it Netflix or how do you watch Heartland in in Net Australia? Netflix, yeah. It Unless is Netflix, you can okay. find it elsewhere on the internet. Um, sure, but, sure. Unless you steal why, it. Like, I'm so used to seeing you in Heartland. Like I'm a huge Heartland fan and big reason right. I interviewed most of the cast members, but also mm -hmm. 
that then I watched that show. I didn't know you were in it. Just saw it right. pop up on Netflix. I was like, yeah, this looks funny. And then I'm like, oh my God, right. that's Peter from <laughs> Heartland. <laughs> and then obviously Amazing. That, he just doesn't sound the same. It was so right. funny. I think that's what made it even funnier because I'm like, he doesn't normally sound like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Amazing. Amazing. And this is also interesting for your acting career too, because you did mention uh, Tacoma FD that you're in right now, and you're playing mm -hmm. multiple roles as your twin brother too. Is that difficult to do? You know, do you ever screw up and go, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be the other character now? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, be careful what you wish for, right? I mean, <laughs> in the first season, we were joking around about it. And I said, yeah, I should play my own twin. We should do that. Uh, uh, which is funny in theory. Uh, I think Famous it worked out. Famous last but, words. But it, right, right. Um, yeah, it, it was great. It, it was, um, it's tough because you don't have any more time, right? Like, you know, it's a, it's a half hour comedy. You have this many days to shoot it. When you're playing both roles, it's not, you know, you don't have extra time to sort of switch characters and then do the other side. And you really have to shoot everything more than twice because if there's someone else in the scene with you, you do it that way as this guy and then this way with whoever's there and then switch out, you have, you know, a stand in to yeah. the back of your head that you act with. Um, and you try to remember what you did on the other side <laughs> because that show is tons of improv as well too, right? So you sort of, uh, um, you're like, but it was you go with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's totally it. Uh, but it was crazy fun. I mean, you know, for the flashback to all, all those literally like we're going to do the other one. We're like, uh, uh, get a funny wig, uh, put this on or what? You know, it's it, it was, happens that fast with this, with this stuff. Right. Um, but it is so fun. That's the most fun I've ever had at work. Those guys are great. I can't say enough good things about them. And, you know, I hope we do it. I hope we do that show forever. Well, the, uh, like, with the directors and everything, are they kind of kicking themselves for agreeing for you to play the twin brother then? Because it's like, oh, this would be so much easier if it was just someone else. Yeah, right. And then well, Gabe can just say moment. his lines and someone else will already be there. <laughs> doesn't have to right. be Yeah, yeah. I, I'll be, yeah, because there were moments when we were all going like, what <laughs> were we thinking? What did um, I agree to? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh, well, it seems like lots of fun. Everyone go check it out if you haven't already. <laughs> yes, do it. As you can probably guess, Gabe, we have a lot of Heartland fans listening today, so I guess we better talk okay. about that show as well. Yes, it's been a let's big do part it. of your life since 2009 as Peter Morris. So let's Crazy. bring you back to the beginning now of that show. How did you come across Heartland? Was Peter a role that you automatically, you know, were interested in that you're like, I have to go for that? Oh boy, I hope you don't quiz me on Heartland stuff, especially from early on. <laughs> Um, I, okay, I, I'm not uh, going to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I do remember. I remember the first time the show came across my desk because a friend of mine, T.W. Peacock, was, was directing it. And I'm actually, um, uh, I'm working with him now. I'm, I'm developing something with him now. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> so we talked about it the other day. I remember I, I went in for it and they offered it to me. And I was like, I don't know. I, th I think it was the second season where I did a couple of episodes. Um, I just didn't know. I was like, I don't know. And going to Calgary and the show, I'm like, eh, I'm kind of doing this. And he was directing it. And he said, coming. What do you mean? You're going to be super fun. Come. It's like, you know, it's, a, it's on a ranch. Everybody's nice. And I said, yeah, okay, sure. I'll do it. And, uh, and that was, oof. Uh, I think the episode where, I meet Peter meets Lou and he spills the coffee on her and everything. And they kind of, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an attraction Remember, there and everything. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and that was it. it. I don't, I don't know that there was much to do after that. I think they had talked about maybe a couple of episodes. It was going to be a bit of an arc. Um, and they finished that season uh, of it. Maybe I did a couple of episodes. I can't remember. And, um, and that was it. And, uh, and then you know, cut to 14 years later, still and I'm still here. But but they, but it was never really talk about. Um, so it was going to be you know this character well. is going to be here for a long time off the top or whatever. It was really to me it was a couple of episodes gig on a show that I didn't know what it was and it was you know um, and uh, and then every season they went again they'd call me and say well you know are you interested because we're going to do it again I said yeah sure if it works and then uh, they've been great they've been great to me about doing other things and stuff and they're accommodating and everything else and it's been uh it's been a joy i honestly cannot believe that it's been uh that the show's been on for 
15 seasons and that uh you know i guess i've been on it for 13. yeah it's crazy that it just turned into yeah. something so huge like right what is yeah. it the, the biggest one hour canadian tv drama in history that yeah, longest it's, it's running? crazy That's yeah incredible yeah and, you're a and it was a slow burn it kind of just like snuck up on me i don't you know it's something that you just keep doing and then the more uh you look at the the uh numbers on it or you know people that love it so much and everything i'm like oh yeah right that's uh and now it's, it's on uh, netflix it's everybody around the world can watch it now which is fantastic. huge right yeah obviously yeah. i didn't watch it you know till a few years ago but i'm guessing was it after the season one it was already quite popular i don't i don't know i i honestly don't know as you said slow um, burn, probably yeah you know and to live and die in canadian television what what things uh go and why they keep going and and why they're canceled is another podcast is yeah. another <laughs> interview like, I think. um you know what i mean but uh, sure people you know uh, love shows like prince of peoria i'm like yeah that'll oh. definitely be renewed nope all right <laughs> we got the scoop today <laughs> Yeah, and it's really numbers sad. or it's who, you know, if there's an exec and they brought the show in and they left and it's someone else is like, ah, I'm, I'm going to make my own mark. There's so many things that are out of our control, you know, and so you just sort of, you know, keep at it. Well, that's the great thing about these interviews. Then the audience get to know what kind of happens a bit behind the scenes because a lot of them just don't mm. understand. They're like, why isn't it coming back? And, well, there wasn't enough numbers. Like, what's the point, you know? Otherwise, you just make right. money. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I feel pleased. like it may be, you know, if they if they did, it could be one of those, um, uh, uh, you know, it could be rescued by like Netflix or by whatever, you know, there's networks that stop making the show because um, it's not produced by Netflix. It's still produced by, a, you know, CBC in Canada and it's acquired by Netflix, right? So, yeah, um, where I think Prince of Peoria was just Netflix, wasn't it? Prince of Peoria was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, 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 fully produced by yeah, we shot it here in LA, and it was uh, just produced by uh, by Netflix in the Netflix studios. Netflix, I think, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like they own every studio here now. It's crazy. Yep, that's true. <laughs> Netflix or, or Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I have previously spoken to Michelle Morgan, who plays Lou on Heartland, about the okay. relationship between Lou and Peter. And no, I'm not going to ask you about whether they get back together because I've been doing the, you know, interviewing for 11 years now. I know that you're not going to tell us because that would ruin I'm it. I'm the one who will. I'll tell you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, that'll ruin it. But Michelle and I kind of spoke about how much she loved that, you know, there was a healthy divorce displayed on TV. So, and, and having that storyline, a lot of viewers actually resonated with that and it kind of put comfort to them with, you know, if there's heaps of kids li- watching the show that maybe their parents have unfortunately divorced and it just makes them feel a little less alone. You, do you agree with that? You know, what's your take on that? Nice. So sure. I mean, stay we, together. <laughs> yeah, well, with, with what you just said, I think that's wonderful if that's you know, a scenario that, that unfolds and that's, you know, that can help somebody through something like that or some kids or something. I think, I think that's great. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a deep dive for me. I, I don't know that I've thought about it, to be honest. I mean, my, my personally, I sort of get the stuff and I, and I play it. Um, but I think that's great. Uh, honestly, what you just said, I'm, 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 I'm all for it. I, you know, I think the show does do that in general you know what yeah, i mean it's, it it's got that feel and it is that sort of thing and i think i sort of realized that in the past like five years or something you know going like what is like what is it like mm-hmm. and why do people like it and what is and you know it, it does have a certain thing i think you touched on uh probably a big part of it you know it's yeah. it's um it's a comfort it's a it's uh um to people i suppose which is what i'm hearing you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. That's something I think I've heard a lot from either fans or, you know, you guys as well, that it does cover so many topics that are relatable, but it's still a show to kind of watch and escape from your own life as well. But I know yeah. the big, big drama obviously recently was Graham Wardle leaving and, you know, mm-hmm. Ty being killed off. That everyone was mm-hmm. like, no, why? Like, he's our favorite character and all this. And it's like, well, actually, right. this was the, probably the perfect thing, you know, that Graham wanted to leave and pursue other mm-hmm. things, but that they did cover, you know, m- well, well, they I guess they covered uh, Lou and Amy's mother passing away right at the beginning, but to mm-hmm. actually have some, you know, a relationship, 
you know, ending because of a death. That's something that hadn't been covered on the show before. And I think it's right. something that everybody goes through. We all go through unfortunate death in life. And it's been such a sure. great thing that they've showcased on TV, in my opinion. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even though everybody misses him. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have some fan questions here, Gabe, that I put up on social media recently that, you know, some fans wanted to know the answer to. Um, most okay. of them were on Instagram, which is great. I'm sorry if I pronounce any of these names wrong, guys. But um, en- Emily Dugung 99 on Instagram wants to know, do you and Peter have anything in common? Uh, we both travel a lot. <laughs> 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 Good answer. I have a daughter. I have a daughter who's uh, a similar age. That's probably it. Yep. No, not much at yep. all. You're a totally different person. <laughs> Shows how great an actor you are. <laughs> and Amber Marshall fan underscore on Instagram wants to know how's it going Ooh. back and forth from the drama of Heartland to the comedy of Dacoma PD? Huh. That's oh, a good that question. Good question. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's great i mean it's i think it's a it's a a gift as an actor to be able to do both of them you know to be honest it's it it, you know it really is um so i would say it's it's great it's it's not uh really tough because it's not like i don't do tacoma and then fly right out uh, to canada and do heartland you know like i there's there's big times in between and everything so you sort of prep and you know you're ready for this show or or you're in the mindset for mm. uh you know for the uh for the comedy they're both different and um you know i love them both very much i i would if i'm completely honest i'm a little partial to comedy i i love it yeah but it's um like a lot of fun and that's what i guess keeps your job fun right yeah yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> I guess the drama kind of stretches that uh, acting muscle a little bit, but then the comedy just is the fun part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, right, this right. Work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Never have to work right, a day in your right. life, right? That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, Molly Suum on in- uh, Instagram wants to know, what is your favorite Hallmark movie that you've been in? Um, I've done a few of those. I know. Uh, <laughs> I want to try to remember... The name of it. Uh, it's like Christmas song. It was Christmas at Cartwright's Christmas list. Yeah, it was the one where I played like, uh, you know, uh, one of Santa's like uh, elves. Like he was a human elf, and he has to come and and get reindeer from from, from her house to save Christmas, and he flies back to the North Pole. Oh my God, what was it called? Uh, I'll come back to you later. <laughs> I can't remember. Right at the um, end when we say bye. Oh, yes, I remember the movie now. <laughs> right, right. They kind of bleed into each other a little bit. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. But they're beautiful, uh, what do they call it? Like heartwarming, feel good movies. That's what we love yes. about them. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I've, I've had a couple of fans on Instagram, you know, in particular, like DK Bird, uh, sorry, TK Bird 98 and Bryson and Bonnie. Uh, wanting to know how your father is going and will he ever be able to act again? Really sorry to hear about uh, what happened, by the way. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, he's doing all right. He's, um, um, yeah, I appreciate you asking. Uh, he's doing okay. Uh, well, he may act again. I don't know. Out, so. Yeah, if, uh, if, uh, if something's the right fit, he may, uh, he may just do it. He may yeah. just be hanging up the old, uh, <laughs> the old dance shoes, I think, but um, well, he's had a good uh, career, so maybe, yeah, hasn't yeah. he? He sure has, yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. Just... Uh, but I appreciate those guys, uh, TK, and uh, y'all asking about him, but uh, he's doing well, yeah, yeah. Well, th- just I guess it depends on how his rehabilitation goes, really. That's it? right, yeah, that's right, yeah. Now, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, Gabe, what else can we expect from you in the future? I do see on the side of acting, you know, you also are a musician in a few bands, even one with your wife. And where are we at as well, you know, with maybe writing and directing your own project one day? You said something was in the pipeline, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of things in in uh, in development right now. Uh, we haven't played music in quite a while. Um, but yeah, I did. I had some bands. I had a band with. 
had had a band with my wife and um uh and that was that was great fun um yeah i am adapting a book um with my partner uh, tw who we um we were talking about earlier who actually yeah. um uh talked me into doing heartland <laughs> 13 years ago <laughs> um uh um, definitely got to thank him <laughs> right yes i will um yeah so we're uh yeah we're doing that you know lots of uh irons in the fire so to speak and um We'll probably do some more Tacoma FD, which is great. And um, and uh, I just came back from uh, Canada, from from Calgary, like I guess a week ago, doing more Heartland. So cool. everybody will be happy to hear that. Yes. <laughs> <He's back>. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I heaps of people are asking that too, and I'm like, well, I'm sure it will come up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to keep updated, I guess, on your uh, Instagram and see what the updates are. I know. I have to update that. I got to post stuff. Every show I do, they're like, why? And I'm like, right. Yes. Very good. <laughs> the fans want to know. <laughs> <laughs> and what advice would you give to our audience who might want to follow their dreams of becoming an actor? I think, you know, I used to just say, uh, you know, train, mm. you know, go to school, train, you know, if you're in, in, if you're in school, if you're in high school or something, you know, try to get involved in the drama program or do some plays or, uh, you know, now I, I feel like, you know, also shoot stuff. Like if you have an idea for a movie and you and your friends want to do something, use your iPhone, do whatever, write your script, shoot it, put it on YouTube, show it around, you know, whatever, uh, you know, facet you want to be involved in, in the, in the industry. I think you can, it's available to you. You can go and do it and you can put it up on a platform and, Somebody can watch it, you know, you can create, you can do all these sort of, these sort of things. And if it's acting specifically, you could start there as well. And um, there's still a lot of great schools and a lot of, you know, um, and if you get out there and start auditioning, you know, put your helmet on because it's, it's, <laughs> it is a life of uh, some pretty harsh stuff uh to go through but maybe not maybe you know you walk through the door the first time and you land a big gig and you're off to the races it's um but uh you know have fun be confident go and get it and do it do it right now that's my mm, advice <laughs> definitely and that is the great thing about with technology these days you can create your own stuff you know iphones are just amazing yeah. now great quality just shoot something and put right. it up on on the internet you never know Absolutely. what will happen so thank you yeah. i appreciate that advice for sure i think it's time for a game what do you think gabe okay <laughs> Now, with our game, it's called the Two Minute Hot Seat. It's very legendary here on Rave It Up. And oh, what happens is I ask you various questions and you just have to pick your preference. So it's like dogs or cats, singing or dancing. And you have to answer as many questions in two minutes as possible. And then we will see, we'll see where you sit on the leaderboard up against everyone else that's played the game on the show. So we can... It's multiple, it's, it's multiple choice? Um, yeah, so it will just be it will just be two things. You just pick your preference. So it's like dogs oh or God. cats. Do you prefer dogs or cats? Yeah, easy. <laughs> easy. I'll win. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah, let's try to beat some of your co-stars. Um, I only just, um, I used to play this ages ago. As I said, I've been doing this for like 10, 11 years. And then the okay. interviews just kind of took over. And people were like, where'd the game go? So I started it again <laughs> last year. So I've had Graham Wardle play it and Chris Potter. So hopefully you can beat them. Graham answered no 51 questions and Chris answered 30. So Woo. hopefully you can beat one of them. That would be awesome. <laughs> wow. The pressure's on. Okay. The pressure is on. Are you ready? <laughs> Let me get my I'm ready. watch out. Okay. It's a great way for all the fans to get to know you better as well. So Awesome. And everyone loves the competitive element too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You ready, Gabe? I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. iPhone or Samsung? iPhone. Apple or Android? Apple. Rap or rock music? Rock. Rock or pop? Rock. Pop or country? Mm, country. Beach or mountains? Mountains. Beach or pool? Beach. Sun or rain? Sun. Skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Comedy or action? Comedy. Blondes or brunettes? Brunettes. Sweet or salty? Salty. Sunglasses or hat? 
Hat. SUV or convertible? SUV. Mac or PC? Mac. PlayStation or Wii? PlayStation. Clean or messy? Clean. Singing or dancing? Singing. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Italian or Chinese food? Uh, Italian. Summer or winter? Summer. Kim Kardashian or Scarlett Johansson? Scarlett Johansson. Johnny Depp or Will Smith? Johnny Depp. Mall or online shopping? Uh, mall. Cinema or home movie? Cinema. Ice cream or gelato? Ice cream. Cake or cookies? Cookies. Cookies or cookie dough? Uh, cookie dough. Family or friends? Family. Christmas or your birthday? Christmas. Night or day? Day. Bus or train? Train. Straight or curly hair? Straight. Eye color blue or brown? Brown. Vampire or werewolf? Werewolf. Texting or calling? Texting. Los Angeles or New York? <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles. Friday or Saturday? Saturday. TV or movies? TV. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Snow or surf? Surf. Harry Potter or Twilight? Harry Potter. Family Guy or The Simpsons? Oh, The Simpsons. <laughs> McDonald's or Burger King? Burger King. French fries or chips? French fries. Burger Same or thing. hot dog? <laughs> Burger. <laughs> guitar or drums? Uh, guitar. Leather or denim? Denim. And we're out of time! <laughs> wow, <that's> awesome! <gasps> How many questions do you think you answered in that time? I hope it's not some sort of psychological test and then later you say... <laughs> <laughs> so this is what, what it really like means. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Oh my God. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you think you beat Graham and Chris? Yes. Or one I think I beat other? Chris. I think I beat Chris. I don't know if I beat Graham. I don't know. All right. Well, as I said, Graham answered... 51 questions. So, you have answered, moment of truth, 49 questions. Come on! So, you, yeah, like two more questions, you would have beat Graham. <laughs> but you beat Graham. You didn't, you didn't ask them fast 30. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Chris only answered 30, so you beat him. And you are sitting, <laughs> let me have a look, number 40 on the Rave It Up leaderboard. Wow. You actually beat one of the guys from the TV show SWAT just by one question. <laughs> well, you see, and they're supposed to be quick, right? Like, he's got to have a no. hair trigger. Exactly. Um, who's your absolute all-time leader on that uh, thing? On the leaderboard, 101 questions, but it was her second time playing and it was in person. And I don't really think she was giving her honest answers anymore. I think it was just, i gotta get, <laughs> I got to get the top of the leaderboard. Right, right. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, well done. Well, I'm, I'm glad you had fun. Just have to come on the show again and, and try to beat your old score. <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll be ready next time. You know what to expect. <laughs> now, we're unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Gabe. But as mm -hmm. a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? Hmm. Oh, probably just like relax everything's fine <laughs> a lot of people say that <laughs> everything's gonna work out you know i think that's such a yeah you stress a yeah, lot around I, that age don't you <laughs> that's it right yeah like, absolutely. what am i gonna do after yeah. school and... <laughs> right right what did that person say when they said that to me <laughs> <laughs> and if the listeners or want to contact you or find out what you're up to in the future where should they go where should we follow you yeah, sure. Uh, all of my handles are Hogan Film. That's um, so easy. <laughs> yeah, Instagram, Twitter, everything. Um, yeah, everything. And go check him out on all the TV shows. You, you kind of yes. you're on several of those uh, TV shows on uh, Netflix, so you're slowly taking over. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's all part of the plan. Exactly. <laughs> 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 And thank you so much for coming on our show today, Gabe. I really appreciate your time. I know you're really busy. <laughs> Absolutely. It was fun. It was great. Did you only just get back? Because you're like, a lot of stuff to do on the home front. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. I just got back a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and now oh my, my wife is... The lawn needs mowing. Yeah she's, and... <laughs> yeah, she's also in the business and she's going east 
to do a show. So I'm back, you know, with the kids and, and everything. everything. And, yeah, well, I appreciate you taking great, the time but, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the kids no, this were is very great. quiet, so didn't even A know. lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, we'd, we'd love to have the you hostages. on again in the future. So if you want to come on again and chat about anything, you're very much welcome to. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Do you have any plans to hopefully in the future when COVID's kind of cleared up a little bit more, plans to come to Australia? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I have friends there and I, I keep... Um, I keep uh, we keep th- keep threatening to, to get together. It's far. It, it is it far. Is. I know it <laughs> <It's> is. <quite laughs> <fun. laughs> I would love, love, love uh, to get out there, though. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's keep in contact. Yeah. If it ever happens, let me know. We'll do a chat. In I will person. do. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Can't wait. I know all the fans are asking that too. All the fans in Australia, they're like, is he coming eventually? (laughs) Amazing. There you go. I ask, guys. (laughs) Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. And if you want to support Rave It Up more, please visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up. We could really use your help and you get a lot of behind the scenes content as well and a lot of free stuff. So why not? As little as $4 a month. That's so cheap, guys. And also, if you haven't gotten our book already, Knowing What I Know Now, please do so as well. It's available as just like that book, <laughs> an ebook, audiobook version is coming very soon. So lots of exciting stuff coming up. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.